Good morning. We are so glad to be back again. This is week three. Um, it's hard week to three. week three. Okay. It is hard to believe that it's been three weeks that we've all been together physically, and um, that saddens me. Um, I cannot wait. None of them can't wait. Also, just to be together again with every one of y'all, and we, like I said last week, we miss y'all, but we are praying and. I know um, about this time we're all feeling that cabin fever, but um, we know that we have a great God that can do great things, and we just pray that He would continue to work um, even in the midst of social media. We are thankful for social media that even though we can't be together, we can come and share God's Word with y'all. So, Ben, you want to get us started? Freedom! That's kind of what I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to to kind of be free of all this. And, and I know you are too. Uh, and just to echo Karen, we we really do miss each and every one of you, seeing you each Sunday. And even during the week, uh, we look forward to that time we'll be, we'll, where we'll be back together. Yes. And so just to kind of review a little bit, this is third session in place. Uh, our first session, we talked about personality discovery. Second session, learning about spiritual gifts, and this one is abilities awareness. So all of us have different abilities. Uh, that's good. That's very, uh, very good. <laughs> some of us wish we had some abilities that uh, that others have, but for whatever reason, God and uh, his divine design of us gave us each different unique abilities. And so if you have your place workbook, uh, we're going to start on page 22, and if you don't have a place workbook, you can still follow along and there we'll cover some different passages. And I still think there's some things that'll be helpful and valuable to you. And again, for those of you uh, who are members here at First Baptist Church and want a place booklet, uh, please just uh, let me know and we'll be glad to make sure you get one. I know several of you have made some of those requests and we've gotten those to you. So let me start off by identifying uh, abilities. What are we talking about? And so the definition that uh, James Swain gives in place is abilities awareness is defined as the optimal environment or surroundings you need to be where your personality and spiritual gifts flourish. And so our abilities are unique and we flourish better in some arenas than in others. So on page 22, let me give you some four instances. Why would an individual desiring to become a world-class snow skier not choose to live year-round in South Florida? <laughs> Bad environment. I, I've, I've been to Florida. I haven't been all the way to South Florida. But but I don't even think there's one place you could even ski, like snow ski in Florida. No, not on real snow anyway. Maybe yeah, some maybe sort some of... Yeah, uh, but I can't even think of a, even a cold place in Florida. Right, right. So. so another question, why would an individual desiring to become a world-class water skier not choose to live in the Rocky Mountains at an elevation of 10,000 feet year-round? <laughs> Same kind of deal, bad environment. Water skiers just don't uh, migrate up to... Uh, the mountains in Colorado to practice water skiing. Another one, why would an individual desiring to become a cattle farmer not choose to live in New York City? Uh, again, bad environment. There's just not a whole lot of land. If there is land, uh, it's going to be extremely expensive. And I'm not sure what people would do with Cows roam around in the Central Park. I was going to say, I can't really say there's been any cows. That would be interesting to know. So, they, uh, would they even know what that is? They may not. I don't so, know. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Well, as we continue on and just looking at uh, page 23, you know, you talk about what are abilities. Well, there's six abilities that we are going to look at here. I'm just kind of going to highlight, and you can, um, as I kind of tell a little bit about each of these abilities. I want you to kind of think of it as yes, no, or maybe. And oh, you may want to write, you know, underneath each one, yes, no, maybe. And as I'm sitting here uh, 
kind of reading the paragraph and telling you a little bit about each one, ask yourself, yes, would that be me? Or no, I don't see anything in here that even sounds like me. Or maybe I'm just not really sure. So just think of yes, no, maybe for each of these six. All right. The first one they have listed is enterprising. And they have a, a great facility with words, which they can put to effective use in selling and leading. They enjoy persuading others to their viewpoints. And they can get impatient with work involving precisions or long periods of intellectual concentration. Do you see um, yourself as energetic, enthusiastic, adventurous, self-confident, and dominant? So circle yes, no, or maybe. Okay, the next one is social. And this was actually, I'll say my first one. And it says, I am social, responsible, and concerned with the welfare of others. I express myself well and get along well with others. I like to be near the center of groups and prefer to solve problems by discussing them with others. I view myself as cheerful, friendly, popular, a high achiever, and a good leader. So, yes, no, maybe. I'd say that's yes for you. Yes, because that, that okay. was my um, top. So, then we have investigative. It says, I prefer to solve abstract problems and understand the physical world rather than acting upon the world. I enjoy complicated problems and intellectual challenges. I do not like structured situations. Lots of rules are working around many people. I have unconventional values and attitudes and would like to be original and creative, especially in scientific areas. I would describe myself as analytical, curious, reserved, and independent. Yes, no, maybe again. Where do you see yourself? I think I'd put yes for that. For you? Mm -hmm. I, I can see you as that, definitely. So, okay. Then turn the page, page 24. The next one is artistic. Um, so think of, yes, no, maybe again. I prefer unstructured situations where I can deal with problems through self-expression in an artistic medium. I prefer to work alone or with just a few others. I have a great need for individualistic expression and I am sensitive and emotional. I would describe myself as independent, original, unconventional, and expressive. And then we have realistic. I am practical, active, and have good physical skills. I like to work outside and create things with my hands. I prefer to deal with things rather than ideas or people. Sometimes I have difficulty expressing my ideas and communicating my feelings to others. My political and economic ideas are fairly conventional. I would describe myself as rugged, robust, practical, and physically strong. So think again, yes, no, maybe. And then the last one we have is conventional. And it says, I prefer highly ordered activities, do not like to be the leader, and like working in a well-established chain of command. I like to know exactly what is expected of me and feel uncomfortable when I do not know the rules. I see myself as traditional, conventional, stable, well-controlled, and dependable. So yes, no, maybe. And it's okay if you have more than one yes, because yeah, um, you can be that. more than have more than one ability. So all right. So those are our six abilities that we'll we're that looking it? at. So yes. Okay. Yeah. I was just checking. <laughs> Glad you're paying attention then. <laughs> so okay. So we like to have fun doing this. So if if you'll notice there, uh, it doesn't it has page one oh two. But if you'll actually look on page 81 in the back of your place notebook, when you went through the spiritual gift study, part of it, when you went through the assessment, the last several questions focused on abilities. And so you should see on page 81 uh, your code, kind of what your summary was. And that's what you want to do. You want to plug that in. And for mine, I put ICS. How about you? What were you, Karen? I was S-E-A with some I. Okay. So, so we're different. Yes, we are. And I think they've probably seen that from the very beginning. <laughs> you know, Which is a good thing because I think together that we complement each other and 
that just helps us see things in different ways, which is really why we've said from the very beginning, it's so important that as a body of Christ, we all have to come together and use all of these personalities, all of our spiritual gifts and abilities. At times, at times, though, when we have some of those differences, we run into some conflict. That's true. Sometimes it does uh, because get a Because we see things from a different perspective. And so being aware of that can help us work through conflict a little that, bit better true. than reaching some, some stalemates. Very true. So on page uh, 25, I just want to kind of hone, hone in on uh, helping you fill in some of these blanks, some principles. Uh, top right-hand page of uh, 25, uh, what God says, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Uh, principle here is go with the flow. In other words, God has designed us really from birth to with certain abilities that uh, we, uh, we just tend to function well in. In fact, I think one of the handouts I will probably send in an email Remind me to do this. Okay. There's uh, one of the ways to look at your abilities is to think through your childhood experiences, uh, what you were good at and why, your uh, uh, elementary age, high school age, college age, young adult, middle adult, and late adult, wherever you fall in those categories, and then looking all the way back, that can help you really discover some things that you're good at, some of your abilities. And uh, sometimes they grow over time. Sometimes they don't change a whole lot. So you'll remind me to do that. I will. Okay, page 26. Uh, another thing from Scripture, uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, a second principle here is, Ability is not based solely on what you have, but who you have. Uh, really understanding that Christ is the one that gives us strength, that fills us with his spirit to enable us to, to really utilize our abilities to glorify and honor God. And then down at the bottom uh, hand, uh, the bottom side of page 26, uh, the right hand column, Principle number three, great ability doesn't come without defeat or failure along the journey. And so one of the uh, couple of different passages, one is Luke 22, 58 through 60. A little later, someone saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. And about an hour after another, later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him. For he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you were talking about. Of course, this is the story where Peter denies Christ three times. And so Peter had this incredible, utter failure in denying Jesus uh, while he was under trial, right before his crucifixion, uh, right after he said he would never do that, and he does. <laughs> but yet we see in the book of Acts that Peter becomes this incredible leader in launching the new church. And so we go through some different difficult experiences. And if we're really sensitive to God's spirit and learn from it, we do come out better on the other side. So now we're going to go through an exercise on page 27. And we're, we're going to look at these ability environments in, in a couple of different ways. Uh, the column on the left, we're going to focus on what's what would be the optimal, optimal environment for a particular ability to, to function in. And so, uh, Karen, you want to start us off? Yeah, I'll get us started. All right. The first one reads, the optimal environment for creating a new ministry from scratch would be... And that would be an artistic, uh, where they create new ministry from scratch. The artistic, remember, it's the creative. They like to think outside the box. So the second one says um, the optical, optimal environment for hosting the new members dinner would be social. These people 
love to be around. At a distance, right now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, right now, at a distance. But normally, this would be the first person who'd be like, I want to have the dinner at my house. They love being around people. They're good with working with people. So, Ben, you want to share the next couple? That'd be great. Uh, the optimal environment for cutting the grass on the church's grounds would be somebody with the, the, the realistic ability. They're that kind of hands-on, physical, uh, get things done kind of ability. Oh, and then the next one. The optimal environment for keeping detailed records of church finances would be the conventional ability. They, they like order, they're very dependable, trustworthy. How about the next two? All right, the next one says, the environment for convincing the school principal to allow a Christian speaker to speak at a school assembly would be the enterprising. Remember, they're the ones who are good with words, good at getting others to come alongside and to work together. And then the last one on that side is the optimal environment for analyzing and solving a space problem for the church would be the investigative. Um, these people can really see the problem and like to fix it. And so, by the way, I've kind of done some of that. In fact, I've wandered around the church many times and I still I've, I've highlighted a couple of spots where we can still have some Sunday school space. We can, okay. I, I think, still fit one in, in the uh, choir loft and then maybe one or two more in the sanctuary, one out here okay, in the lobby Okay, so that area. is the investigative. He's okay. definitely showed you there how. <laughs> um, moving on. Okay, so Ben, what's the second side? Okay, so the right-hand side, uh, this is going to help you to think about these abilities a little bit differently. Uh, what are some arenas where a particular ability might not flourish or might not be fulfilled. Okay. That first one there, you see the blank and then it says most likely would not be fulfilled in only doing record keeping in a cubicle by themselves. And that would be the social people. Um, oh, that'd be horrible for a social. It people. would, because remember social, they want to be social. They want to be out with the people and to put them in a space by themselves or to go off and work on a on a project in a room by themselves, that's very hard for them. So, all right. And the next one says, most likely would not be fulfilled in only meeting and greeting people in the church. And that is the investigative person. Because remember, these are people who, they want to look for problems and fix it. They don't want to work with the people. They are out looking and searching and how can I do this? So, uh, the next one, uh, most likely would not be fulfilled in only being given a certain task on how to do something and then being micromanaged while carrying out those instructions. So think about that. The artistic person. Because they're creative. They want to kind of do things on the edge, think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the next one. Most likely would not be fulfilled in only being in environments where they are following others' instructions and never being given the opportunity to lead. Think about that. It'd be the enterprising uh, uh, ability because the enterpriser just really thrives on, on leading and making decisions and moving things forward. All right, and the next one says... Most likely would not be fulfilled and always being told to create something. And when they ask for further instructions, we're always told however you want to do it. The conventional person, remember conventional, they want, want to know exactly what's required of them. Here are the rules. This is how we do it. Here are the instructions. So they would really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And then the last one says, most likely would not be fulfilled in environments where they are never given the opportunity mm -hmm. to use their hands, but always asked to use their thinking as a way to serve. Realistic. Remember the realistic people. They're the ones who, they are hands-on. They want to be given a task and go and do it and be hands-on or be outside. They, um, it's all about using their hands. Um, so you got to really... Stop and think. Okay, I, I love this page because it really does show. It helps you think of it from a positive yeah. 
yeah. way of looking at things and then kind of a negative way of looking Plus at things. Plus you kind of understand each one a little bit better. That's right. So. so to help us understand a little bit better, turn to page 28. On page 28. Now, if you're an investigate, you have that investigative kind of ability or maybe you're a C kind of personality, you see a page like this, you're like, oh man, this is exciting. <laughs> Now, so talking Ben's language here, everybody. <laughs> now, the social kind of person, they're just like, whatever, just let's let's have a conversation about it. So uh, we'll, we're going to look at this in a little more uh, detail. So turn to page 29. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these different biblical characters and some unique things about that particular character and their abilities that we see in scripture and Karen will read uh, some different scriptures and we'll just kind of walk through some of these characters and their uh, abilities. The first one we'll talk about is uh, Moses. And he was one of those key figures in the Old Testament who led the Israelites out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. They wandered around in the desert for 40 years. 10 Commandments, you know Moses. Uh, one of the things about Moses, he was extremely persuasive <laughs> in uh, persuading God <laughs> and, and asking God not to wipe out uh, all the Israelite people. And he was very persuasive in influencing the Israelites as well. Karen, you want to read a few yeah, of those verses? Um, in Exodus 32, uh, you see in verses 11 and in verses 14, but here's a little bit of what that says. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord. The Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. And then you see in Exodus 32, 28, the Levites did as Moses commanded. And then in Exodus 35, 5 and 36, 5, you also see... From what you have taken, from what you have taken offering for the Lord, everyone who is willing, the people brought much more than enough for doing the work. So again, you just see through these texts that uh, Moses is coming before God. God relents. And I seem like didn't he multiple times go to the Lord and ask? The Lord, please save us. Please save us. I mean, I, I see more of the persuasive by constantly going to God and ask, save us, save us. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that was very unique. Shows a lot about uh, Moses' shepherd heart for the uh, for the people, uh, even though they were sinful and rebellious. And then we also see how Moses, as he's speaking to the people, uh, they respond. And, he, and then that kind of leads to the next one. Another part of his enterprising ability is uh, leading. Uh, Moses had uh, an incredible, incredible ability to lead a lot of people uh, over the course of several years. Uh, Karen, you want to read mm -hmm. just a few of those short okay, verses? Okay, um, yeah. Exodus 24, 3, Moses went and told the people. Then you see again in Exodus 32, 26, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And then Exodus 32, 34, now go lead the people. And so we see Moses, I mean, he's, he's an incredible uh, leader. And most who have that enterprising ability, uh, they, they are frequently in different leadership kind of roles. And then we also see that he, he accepts uh, authority. He, he submitted to God and, and obeyed God and followed God's will for his life. Karen, you want to read a few of those? All right. Exodus 24, 1, it says, uh, God saying, then he said to Moses, come up. And then Exodus 25, 1, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites. And then again, Exodus 26, 1, make the tabernacle. Yeah. And in all those areas, Moses was obedient. He uh, went up and he told the people and he built the tabernacle, and so he submitted to God's authority in his life. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is Aaron, who had that social kind of ability. He kind of liked being the center of attention, and sometimes for him, because he was swayed by the people a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, because he, he was extremely 
extremely relational that uh, got him in trouble a few times. <laughs> so one of the things we see about the social ability, they like to be near the center of, they, uh, of groups or attention. And in Exodus 32, 1, uh, the people all gathered around Aaron, and this was while uh, Moses was up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments from God. And then in 32.3, all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. And you know what he did? He took these and created a golden calf mm -hmm. and was really dishonoring to God by building uh, this idol. And after seeing all these things that God had done in just a short time, they, they go and do this. And, and part of that was Aaron and his social, but he just kind of went with the flow. And then he was also, uh, those who have that social ability, uh, they're good listeners and they like to uh, facilitate things. So Karen, you want to read that scripture from Exodus yeah, 32? Yeah, Exodus 32, 4, and then again you see it in twenty uh, verse 24 as well. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol, idol calf, fashioning it with a tool. They gave me the gold, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. And that was, wasn't that what you were talking about? Yeah, I kind of jumped ahead of it. But, so, uh, uh, you, you do see this. Now, in enterprising, he wouldn't let the people influence uh, him like this. But Aaron, you see that person with social ability, they're, they're that people pleaser kind of person, and they like to listen and kind of go along. Then we have uh, the next uh, person, or actually group of persons, uh, the 12 spies. And we can see in these 12 spies, some of their investigative abilities, by the way, how cool would it be to uh, cross into a new land and explore and, and spy on them and bring back all that information? Uh, kind of makes you want to get outside in the woods and go exploring somewhere. Oh, wait, I'm getting sidetracked here, aren't I? Very. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, you can really tell Ben's abilities come out as we've talked about each of these. He's constantly, he keeps coming back to investigation, investigation. So there's a bunch of other abilities too that people have out uh, there. No, been, I know. So. Okay, so <laughs> for uh, time, <laughs> solve abstract problems. You you see that come out in these spies as they are gathering this information. In fact, Karen, you want to read that Deuteronomy? Yeah, Deuteronomy one twenty two. Then all of you came to me and said. Let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. And so these spies went out and they uh, gathered a whole lot of information about the promised land. So really, if you're getting ready to do something like that, you really want to look for those who have the ability of investigative. Those are mm -hmm. the people you want on the front lines going out and spying. So... And then uh, another element of their investigative ability is to analyze situations and just kind of think through things. And Karen, you want to read that passage? All right. Numbers 13, verses 17, 17 through 20 says, When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the, is it Negev? Negev. 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 And on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? And there trees are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. So this investigative type, now, I don't know if they wrote this information down or just kept it up here, but in today's culture, it, they would have been making a list of all these. <laughs> uh, oftentimes, the investigative ability, they're, they're list makers, and they gather all that kind of information uh, that way. So let's, let's look at the next one, the artistic uh, of ability. And this, in particular, we see through... Bezalel, and, and this comes out when we see the artistic abilities in designing 
a variety of different elements related to the tabernacle. All right. And so uh, the one of their abilities there, their artistic expression, is creative expression through artistic imagination. Karen, you want to read that? Passage? Yeah, in Exodus 31, verses 3 and 4, it says, I filled him with the Spirit of God with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts to make artistic design. And so you see that God's Spirit uh, gives Bezalel this uh, ability to be creative. Uh, oftentimes, these kinds of persons, they, they can just uh, create things. They, 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 can, they can see things and just design it and, it, and it really comes out extremely beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, they can also recreate work. Uh, recreate from the work of others and, and make it work. And so uh, just a few short verses here, Exodus 25, 10, have them make a chest. 25, 23, make a table. 26, 1, make the tabernacle. And so you see their ability come out in all these different things that they are making. One of the things that they really appreciate is validation and feedback for some of the contribution that they uh, are involved in. So Karen, you wanna read those? Yes. Exodus 39, 43 says, Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded, so Moses blessed them. And then in Exodus 32, 29, you have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. And so you see there just that uh, validation from Moses and some others. Uh, and then the last one, oh, not quite, next to the last one, uh, the realistic ability. And we see this come out in, in the Levites, in their uh, work that they put in uh, day to day in managing the tabernacle and then later on uh, in the temple. And so... Uh, one of their, the aspects of their ability is emotions are balanced and they're very pragmatic with problems and solving problems. Karen, you want to read a couple of those verses? Exodus 32, 28 says, The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. In Exodus 32, 29, You have been set apart to the Lord today. For you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. So, so uh, this is this story is uh, Moses leading the Levites to respond to people who had rebelled against God in the worship of this golden calf, and they, when Moses said to take them out, they did. They were obedient in following. Uh, that direction from Moses. We also see that uh, their political ideas are fairly uh, conventional. Uh, in other words, they're, they're pretty straight and narrow. Karen, you want to read that first? Exodus 32, 26. So he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. So again, Moses is coming down off the mountain and the Levites are the ones, they, they're, they're in line in following along with Moses and just his uh, conservative direction. And they're also physically strong in the way they handle things. Um, it says in Exodus 32, 27 and 28, each man strap a sword to his side go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded. Now, this is really kind of a, a gruesome story in, in reading really through <laughs> uh, in talking about this realistic perspective. But you, you see those who have that realistic ability, uh, they're able to to do things and, and get things accomplished that that others may struggle to do. Uh, when it comes to hard work, oftentimes inside or outside, they're able to get that done where others would be like, ain't no way I'm climbing under that building to <laughs> deal with that. It could be snakes or rats. So. Who knows what? <laughs>
And then the last one, uh, we're looking at uh, Aaron's sons. And this is the conventional ability. One of the things we notice about them, they are the rule followers. Uh, they're, they follow along with all the rules. Karen, you want to read that verse? All right. Exodus 29, uh, verses 19 and 20. Take the other ram and Aaron his... And Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on its head, slaughter it, take some of its blood, and put it on the lobes of the right ears of Aaron and his sons. So you see this process of uh, following the rules through uh, uh, anointing and offering sacrifices uh, throughout uh, the Old Testament. Then we also see that their activities are highly ordered. There's just uh, they tend to do the same thing over and over and over again, and and that's okay. They're just kind of wired with that ability to uh, to work that way. So that's an interesting uh, scripture, Exodus twenty nine twenty two, which keeps following along. Um, Take from this ram the fat, the tail, the fat around the inner parts, the covering of the liter, liver, both kidneys with the fat on them, and the right thigh. <laughs> Interesting. That's pretty ordered. I mean, that's just kind of, ooh. <laughs> you know, that almost makes me think of skinning a deer That's or what I was going to say. <laughs> but uh, anyway, highly ordered in the process wow. that they went through in offering sacrifices. It was a very detailed, prescri prescriptive kind of process that God had laid out that when they made offerings, it was to be done this exact ordered way. And they followed those correctly. Yeah. I mean, like, okay. And then uh, the last one, uh, they teach and train by being very methodical and patient. <laughs> Exodus 29, verse 30. I'm reading verses 38, 39, and then verse 42. It says, this is what you are to offer on the altar regularly each day. Two lambs a year old, offer one in the morning and the other at twilight. For the generations to come, this burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance to the tent of the of meeting before the Lord. So this is a couple of times a day, day after day after day after day after day, doing the same thing. Uh, but that's that's one of their abilities to be able to to do that and uh, and be okay with that and be satisfied in that kind of Two ability minutes. that God's given them. So let's kind of, uh, we're, getting, we're getting close to wrapping things up, aren't we? Uh, so let's, let's reflect uh, a little bit. So we've talked about uh, personality discovery, learning about spiritual gifts and abilities, uh, awareness. Now, one of the things you'll see up the top right hand side is where you can uh, put your, your code, your ability code, code. I put ICS, what is, what did you put? Um, I was the S E A kind of slash I. Oh, that's right. Okay. So. And so where we're going here with this is to help you discover your personality, your spiritual gifts, your abilities, your passions, and your experiences. How does all that fit into who God has created you uniquely to be? And what does that mean? How you can uniquely serve in the body to, to further God's kingdom here and literally around the world. So that's well, kind also of what we're doing. Uh, one thing, just want to point out again, and I, I know we've said it in the past, and just keep saying, you know, you, you look at these abilities, remember, one isn't greater than the other. It's just, it makes us all unique and different, but we need all of them. So don't think that that's well, they have such a, I just can't ever talk and be like them. That is correct. Um, that's not really what it's about. It's about looking and seeing, okay, what is God? What ability has God given me? What is that gift God's given me and that personality? And how can I use it for him and to glorify him and not others? So just, I want you to be reminded That's of that. good. Thank you. That's, so. that's always a good reminder as we're going through right. this. Uh, even as I'm presenting and sharing some things about my giftedness and personality type and Karen too, that the goal isn't for you to be like me. It's not to be like right. Karen. It's really to be who God's created That's you right. to be and to, to serve. And when you serve out of that uh, 
create, creation that God has created you to be, it, it really gives you uh, energy and excitement and fulfillment, and it ministers to the entire body and further God's kingdom. Very true. So to help you to begin thinking about how all these are fitting together, think about your personality type, your spiritual gift, and your ability. And I'll make an attempt to try to make some connections here with mine. So my personality type, or one of the elements was uh, C, being the conscientious, kind of detailed, one of my spiritual gifts, teaching, and then investigative ability. And so kind of putting all that together, one of the things I enjoy doing is reading, studying, and pulling together uh, either uh, a devotion or a sermon or a Bible study or some discipleship time. That's just something that is enjoyable for, for me to do. To do some other task, uh, sometimes I struggle. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those realistic, get those uh, home projects done. I can do them, <laughs> but I, I have some that are still looming on the horizon, don't I? You'd rather do the study and the investigation. So, but that's who God made you to be. Yeah. So that's okay. So, well, and for me, I'm just looking. You know, I my personality is more the phlegmatic. I'm more the laid back, and then you add in my spiritual gift with that, which was uh, just the gift of discernment, the the and the gift of administration, and you know, looking at my laid backness, and then the ability of the social, the enterprising. The, the listening, the counseling, bringing all that together. I, I love the, let me listen and help give you godly wisdom and counsel. And um, let me help come together as a group. And let's look and see, okay, well, what do we need to put together to make something work? So that that's kind of how I can use all of mine together. And um, I enjoy that to where um, I do struggle more if, you know, it's here's this project, this task, go into this room and get it done. That's a little bit harder for me at times. So. And sometimes, I, maybe I shouldn't say this, I don't know. But e <laughs> even doing something like this, uh, you're willing to do it, but it's more of a struggle for you. Than right, for it doesn't come as natural for me as um, the studying to have it all down to where... Talking probably comes more naturally. It does. Come <laughs> um, my words more, um, but um, the actual, I would agree with that study, putting it together. So that's very true. Yeah. So, so I, I hope you see where we're going with this, and I hope you're enjoying this uh, play study. We'll have a couple more sessions to go, but actually, next week is going to be something a little bit different because it's going to be Easter Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're excited about Easter Sunday here at First Baptist Murphy. We are going to have church on Easter Sunday. It just won't be uh, physical here on campus. We'll again do a Facebook Live and we'll, we'll have some things we're gonna share uh, uh, this, uh, this week about some things we're gonna do Easter week and I'll share some more things on uh, Sunday afternoon via social media and some additional emails to encourage you to really celebrate Resurrection Week in some some fun and memorable kind of ways. And so I want to read one last thing, and then we'll close in word prayer before uh, we take a little break before worship. So uh, I love this quote here at the bottom of page 33. I am only one but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall do. So, wouldn't it be pretty neat if each and every one of us here at First Baptist Murphy discovered that one thing that God has called us to do to function within the body. And if everybody did that consistently and did it well, uh, think of the kingdom impact we could make. Let's close in word prayer. Father, thank you for this time 
here together to to learn about the abilities that you've given us to use for your glory and for your honor. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd give us wisdom and insight into that. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, safety and protection on uh, our families, on those involved in our church. Lord, for our community and our country and, and literally the entire world in just wrestling through some of the things with uh, COVID-19, Lord, we pray for just those who are uh, leading in these days in uh, our local governments, in our state governments, in uh, our federal government. Lord, we pray that you'd give them wisdom and for all our healthcare workers and first responders and those who are literally on the front lines uh, day in and day out serving people. We pray for their protection and safety. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to trust in you, uh, knowing that uh, you're always there with us and that we can come and talk to you. Lord, uh, help us to continue to stay connected with one another and to continue to grow and mature in our walk with you. And Lord, we do look forward to getting on the other side of this where we can get back together uh, again, connected as a body. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you in just a few minutes for worship.